right. Howdy everyone, I'm Doug Howe. I want to welcome you to the next Positive Gravity. Today I'll be working with this beautiful, big, honking piece of silver maple. This is a green, green piece of wood that was cut from a tree uh, about a week ago. The tree had fallen about a month ago in an acquaintance's yard and uh, after some insurance haggling and whatnot, I was able to go cut a bunch of it. And I got a bunch of pieces. This is one of them. I'm going to turn many of them as, as many of them as I can while they're green and set them aside to dry the rest of the way before I finish turning them. Uh, but there's a bunch of them, so they'll probably be half dry by the time I finish getting to them. Right now, they've all been cut up and they've been sealed. The end grain has been sealed with a product called Anchor Seal, which is kind of like a, a latex paint coating that um, seals the end grain so they don't dry as quickly. Um, before I get to telling you about how I'm going to turn this piece, I wanted to tell you a little bit about where the wood came from. I haven't seen a lot of videos where people talk about the wood from the perspective of the tree to the point where you get it in your shop and you're ready to work with it. There's a lot of videos of people like, how do you cut up a bowl blank and things like that, but I have a little more to tell you about. Um, there's probably other videos out there. I haven't seen them, but um, I'll give you my story. So. Let me bring you over here so you can see the iPad a little bit better. And I'll do it down here. There we go. So that's the tree. So it fell down from the neighbor's yard across the fence, broke the fence, took out the power lines, so on and so forth. None of that's important for wood turning. But uh, when they came and cut it, I had them leave this trunk for me. And um, I didn't actually measure, but I think the diameter, the thickest diameter down here was about 22, 24 inches. And this part up here is about 20 inches. So these are probably about 12, something like that. So I had them leave this part, I mean, A, because it's big enough to make some nice sized bowls out of, but another important feature is this, there's two crotches here. Um, there's this part and there's this part. And this is the part that I'm going to be working with today, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how I got from here to here. So there's a couple things of interest. I mean, A, a crotch is typically um, can have some nice, interesting wood grain in it. It's hard to see in this picture, but um, right in the middle, right down through here, the bark is kind of ruffly. Where, it, where the bark, the two tree trunks kind of come together. And, you know, that can be indicative of some interesting grain in the actual wood under the bark. So I was very interested in this piece. So I went ahead and cut this up like so. Uh, and you can see there's a whole bunch of pieces, but looking back, this is the lower crotch, this was the upper crotch, and I cut off the two trunks and the main trunk, leaving the crotch intact. So this is where we ended up. Once I got it home, um, I split the crotch in half vertically, so up and down the tree trunk. So this is half of one branch, half of the other branch, and then half of the main trunk. And the crotch is here. I don't know if you can see the roughly bits of the bark in the middle here a little bit better. It's kind of roughly everywhere. This is a silver maple, but it's a little different right in here. And um, if I flip that around, I eventually got it kind of rounded up a bit with a chainsaw. And there's some interesting features that you can see. So. Uh, one feature is there's two, um, let's make this line a little bit bigger. There's two um, uh, pith lines right here. So that's the first trunk, that's the second trunk. The other interesting part is right in the middle here, like I was talking about. So this is where the crotch is. And you can see right down the middle here, there's some interesting texture in the wood. It's kind of like feathery looking. 
you can probably see it best up here. So you have these kind of like feather patterns going off the middle. So once that's all finished and, and oiled, that'll really pop and be beautiful. And that's why I cut this up the way I did and why I saved this piece. I did draw a circle on here. Um, it's about there. Let's get you back into full view here. It's about there. So we have our middle portion that I want to keep. There's pith here and pith here that I want to get rid of. And I have a circle around here that's going to be the diameter of my platter. Um, so basically I want to turn this surface down to get rid of this pith. So I had to go, you know, maybe an inch down enough to turn this pith away. If you go too far, you could lose this pattern here, which we didn't want to do. So I just turned it down enough to get rid of the pith. And retain this. And what I decided to do is make this surface the uh, bottom to make sure that I keep this nice stress pattern in the wood. I don't want to turn it away, making a dish out of it. So I'm going to leave this as the bottom and turn in from the other side. So let me show you the actual piece of wood. And we'll take a look at how that, how that is. All right, so like I said, this is green wood, so it's pretty heavy. I don't know how much it weighs, but it's probably 40 pounds. You can see the stress line here from the crotch. And this was the top of the tree. So there was one trunk coming out over here and there was another trunk coming out over there. And this was the lower portion of the tree where the main trunk came out towards the camera here. So this is half of it. I have another one that's the same somewhere in my wood pile that I'll dig out and probably do the same thing with it after I see how this works. So this is gonna end up being the bottom. Um, I did put a tenon on here. Once I got it rounded up, I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to get it on the lathe and stuff, so I, I did all that already. Um, this is about 17 and a half inches round. I put a tenon here so I can put this in my chuck. And I think what I'm going to do... <clears throat> I had mounted it with the faceplate. So I'm going to take the faceplate off. I'm going to mount it by the tenon, and I'm going to turn all this bark off. And it's a lot thicker on this end than it is on this end. This end is only, you know, two, three inches. So the, you know, the workable wood that I have is really about only about half of this thickness. So I need to turn away a bunch of this, get rid of all this bark, and turn it down to something that's maybe two inches thick, two and a half inches, maybe three inches. We'll see what it looks like. But, and then it has to dry. All right, so why don't we get to it? We'll take the faceplate off, we'll mount it by the tenon, and we'll take off this bark and turn this down to a thinner, a thinner disc to uh, dry. If you enjoy my videos, or you, uh, you know, you get entertained, or you've learned some things, I really would appreciate uh, if you hit that follow button. That's a great way to support my channel, and I appreciate everyone who follows. And I also appreciate comments. I like to talk to people who watch my videos and learn from their comments. Uh, so with that. Don't forget, always enjoy the process. Sometimes that's all you get. Let's get going. All right, so I've taken the uh, faceplate off the other side. I mounted the chuck on here. Let's see if we can get this to mount up. There we go. Too bad. All right, so the goal now is to remove this bark, bring this down level. There's a pencil line over here that you probably can't see right about here. So I need to remove a fair amount, but this is all curved, so it's not quite as much as it looks, but there's a, there's a fair amount of wood here to remove. 
So I'll just keep turning it down from here uh, until I get to mostly wood, and then I'll probably stop and let it dry. This could be one of the heavier things I've ever put on here. Uh, I guess it was heavier when I put it on the other way because I removed a bunch of wood on this side. So. <laughs> Got the half inch bowl gouge. Mask and face shield. I'm going to check how tight this is before I launch this thing into space. Okay, I got a good connection in the back here. All right. I think we're ready. I'm going to come in here and start removing material. Three hundred and fifty RPM. Shooting bark all over my shop. I gotta drop the curtain. I don't know if you can hear all the bark hitting the curtain now. <laughs> I don't know what others do for their shops, but I don't know if you can see it, but I have basically just a shower curtain back here, and I have another one on this side of my lathe. And I roll them up, and they just hang from the eaves here. And when I want them, I just undo the Velcros, drop them down, and then I can just roll them right back up. It works really good. So you can see I'm starting to remove wood here and over a little bit over here, but not here. So I'm cutting, you know, what they call cutting air until I come in contact over here. And then it's air until I come in contact over here. When that's the situation, what I'm trying to do is apply downward pressure onto the tool rest, not forward pressure into the wood. Downward pressure and just bring it up so that it cuts and then it stays in the air, and then it cuts. So I'm not pressing into the wood, I'm pressing down into the tool rest.
stop this, take a look at it. Getting there. And I can bring my tool rest up a little closer. It's 500 RPM. I'm getting sprayed by this piece of wood now. Now that I'm getting down into the inner part of the wood, it's still really wet. I don't know if you can hear that. And it sounds like it's raining. That's water coming out of the log, hitting my glove. Getting there, but it's really wet. Gorgeous. This is going to be a beautiful piece of wood. Too bad about this. Oh well, it is what it is. I'll keep going until I get at least rid of this. So I gotta come down another half inch. Starting to get down into the figuring here from this split in the tree. I think I'm going to stop here. There's a small chance I'll leave this uh, little bit of live edge on there in the finished product. I'm not sure. Once I remove it, I can't put it back. So. Left arm is wet. All right, now well, we're down to about 2.75 inches. This will end up being the bottom, this will end up being the top, and it's either going to be a shallow dish. You know, I could leave it this size and just put an edge and turn it into a dish. Or 
I could uh, keep turning this down into a platter. So I could uh, I'd have to remove another inch or two off here. It seems like such a waste of all this wood. If I had a good way to cut this in half, I could make two platters. But uh, I'd have to come up with some sort of a jig to put this through the bandsaw in a safe way. I don't even know if my bandsaw can handle that, that height. That's 17 and a half inches. Definitely can't do that in my bandsaw. Give me the bigger bandsaw. Other than a, ba a bigger bandsaw, I don't know another good way to cut a disc this big in half, except for a chainsaw, but I would need a bigger chainsaw than the one I have as well. So <laughs> no can do there. I think we might just be stuck with one, one piece here. Like I said earlier, I have the other half of the tree that I'm gonna do the same thing to. Maybe I'll do it slightly differently, I'm not sure. This was the edge of the tree. And you know, as you can see, I've turned in a ways and I'm just starting to get to the figuring. So this figuring is really in the heart of the tree and it gets less as you get out towards the bark. So that was my reasoning for putting the middle on the bottom here. Um, if I did it the other way around, I'd be turning away wood on this side and working my way out towards the bark and I would run out of figuring, potentially I would turn it all away and that would be tragic. So here we are. But yeah, it's starting to come through. I think it's looking really good. Beautiful piece of wood, and now I just need to set it aside and pray that it doesn't crack. It's all anchor sealed on the end grain. Actually, I think I anchor sealed it all the way around. And I suppose I could collect a bunch of these wet shavings and put it in a bag and with some wet shavings and just set it aside. I think that's what I'll do. And that should protect it from cracking. All right, well, thanks for joining me on this. I will, I'm gonna be setting this aside for a while, weeks to months for this to dry. And uh, when I bring it back, I will bring you back and we can watch together as I turn this into something beautiful. See you then.